Good afternoon. Hub Tutoring here bringing you a very nice and simple 1400 plus strategy to get a, a nice top 10 percentile score on your SAT. You know, that's really going to help you to get into your uh, elite schools, elite universities uh, that want very high, um, you know, uh, standardized test scores, right? That want scores within the top 10 percentile, right? The 90th percentile and above. So let's get right into it. So we're going to go over the outline, uh, right? Right here. This is resources, suggested background, understanding the SAT, learning the SAT in terms of, uh, you know, practice tests and, and drills and developing speed after that, right? So that's going to get into really some of the, some of the skill building in, in speed, such as quick reading, you know, speed reading, uh, you know, increase comprehension speed as well as quick math and practice tests, you know, practicing those skills on practice tests. Um, and so, you know, once that baseline is developed, getting, uh, you know, really narrowing down on the weaknesses, right? Uh, and then making that, uh, adjust, making those adjustments, uh, we're gonna, also going to go over some study strategies, a recommended syllabus, and other recommendations. All right, so let's get right into it. So starting off with the resources. So I have some required resources and suggested resources I listed. As for required resources, there's the official SAT study guide from College Board. You want to get the most up-to-date one, so that should be like the 2020. Um, if there's a new one, at, when you watch this, get make sure you get that one. Uh, you also want to get a, a good calculator, right? So you can get the TI-30XS, uh, X S, which is a very solid computer. I'm oh, sorry, a very solid uh, calculator. It's very solid, uh, it's, and it's a lot cheaper. Right? It's probably about twenty, thirty dollars. Or you can get the TI eighty-three, eighty-four, eighty-nine, or even the TI Inspire. Right? So I mean, those are going to be uh, you know better quality calculators. They're going to take you through a lot of difficult coursework uh, in high school, college, um, and, and perhaps further as well. They're scientific calculators and not only financial. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be probably about uh, maybe between uh, 80 to $120, right? So, they're, I mean, they're pretty expensive compared to the TI-30XS. Uh, however, it's worth it. It's a good investment. Now, you need some notebooks, right? Uh, you know, I usually get these kind of notebooks from the dollar store, you know, a dollar each, right? You need pencils, right? So, these are the suggested resources, right? I, I strongly recommend the grammar workbook for the SAT, uh, the Barons, right? So, you know, as I'm using, as I'm, uh, you know, crafting this, the most recent one I used was the third edition. Uh, perhaps there will be a newer edition, maybe fourth or fifth by the time you're, you're at this. So, I mean, the, it's a good... It's a good treatment of, you know, the different grammar rules. And then also how to become a straight A student by Cal Newport, right? That's just a really good book to have in general on how to, you know, how to prioritize studies and how to be, be a good student. Guaranteed 4.0 by Donna O'Johnson and YC Chen. It's another great book uh, on, you know, really excelling academically. Uh, you know, you, you need a personal laptop or, or a tablet. I mean, that, I think that's suggested. It's not... Um, it can completely required where right? you can get away with just a book and, you know, other, other, um, technologies. Okay. So the suggested background, right, is, you know, you definitely need algebra, geometry, pre-calc. Uh, I recommend as many difficult classes as possible, right? If you're taking AP language and AP literature before you take the SAT, I mean, it's, you're going to be used to a very high level, a very advanced level of reading, you know, you'll be, you'll be ready at a college level of reading before you sit down for the SAT, right? If you take an AP Calc, you would have solved so many more problems, uh, you know, you know, than, than what's required for the SAT. So you're going to, you should be able to answer SAT math questions in at least two different ways, right? I mean, to really excel in the SAT, you want to be quick, and you want to know how to answer every question 
in at least two different ways. If you can answer every question three different ways or two, two or three different ways, you can get yourself a perfect score, right? That way, you know, you, you know, not, not saying that you would do that for every question, but, you know, you, that way you, you never get stuck, right? And you can check your own work in, in multiple ways. Um, you know, in order to understand the test, we're on C now, understanding that CT, um, you know, start off with why, right? So, you know, why is the SAT important, right? It's it's important gateway test to your future. So but for many universities, they do accept the ACT. However, for, for many universities, the SAT is really the standard test to get in. Um, and also, if you do very well in the SAT, you can uh, qualify for scholarships, right? You know, and we can talk about that more. If you're interested, just reach out to me how to strategize and get the most scholarship money, go to college, uh, you know, for free, God willing. Um, and then so you have to ask yourself, what is your why, right? What do you want to do with your life? Right? What do you want to be when you grow up? As the for proverbial question goes, right? A big enough why can overcome any how. So what test scores and grades are needed by your dream school, right? Ask yourself that. Uh, you know, typically you want at least a 1400, you know, to get into really, you know, good schools, even a 1450 will be better, 1500 will be better. If you can get a 1600, kudos to you, right? But definitely you want to aim for at least a 1400. That way, you know, you're competitive, right? Uh, less than a, a 1400 or even less than, less than a 1300, you know, it's not, com it's not that competitive these days. You want to get at least a 1400. You know, as your baseline, later on, you can look at, you know, SAT scores required by, by each university. But just off the bat, you want to get at least a 1,400, right? I mean, Harvard, these, these guys want 1,500 and above, sometimes you know, even 1,550, 1,600, you know, MIT. These guys want 1,500, 1,600, you know, and they want 800 on the math for sure, MIT, you know. Uh, but yes, you can pick up. You can look up the score required by your dream school. In terms of learning the SAT, right, we're going to go over the math section a bit, grammar section, uh, and within grammar sentence mechanics. So uh, for the math section, you really under have to understand the formulas, right? Make sure you understand how to use all of the formulas provided uh, within the SAT book, within the SAT test, right? Um, and they're going to cover topics such as algebra, geometry, trigonometry. Uh, and some, you know, related rates, let me, related rates, uh, or rates, rates problems, right? And there also may be some 3D shapes as well. Um, you know, and definitely they're going to test your logical reasoning, right? Uh, so within the grammar section, make sure you understand the difference in, you know, in, in when to use whom versus who, right? Who versus whom. And then, you know, also who versus that versus which. Look into irregular verbs. So, you know, irregular verbs in the past, present, perfect tense as well. So, you know, one example I've, I'm giving you guys is uh, began, begin and begun, right? In the, in the past, you know, I began to study. In the present, I will begin to study. In the in perfect tense, um, you know, uh, I, I had, you know, I, I, uh, I begun, or, or, uh, you know, the, the perfect tense, right? Begun, that's the the perfect tense. So it's these are you know irregular verbs, right? What you also want to understand the subjunctive tense, right? Uh, you want to understand the subject verb agreement, right? So for singular versus plural. So I'm giving you guys an example here for plural. Um, I'm going to give you the, the wrong uh, wrong way of doing it in the correct way. So incorrectly, you would say, you know, delivery of today's newspapers and magazines have been delayed, right? So this delivery is a singular subject, right? Um, or you know today's new today's newspaper right that's uh you know 
you know, delivery, that's a sing, you know, singular subject, and then uh, delayed, right? That's a plural verb. So this is, you know, have been delayed, that's incorrect. But the correct way is delivery of today's newspapers and magazines has been delayed, right? So you what you see is a subject verb agreement. Right, the, the the singular subject with the plural verb, the plural subject with the singular verb, right? That's how it works. So also understand syntax mechanics, what an apostrophe is when you use it, comma, when you use it, semicolon, you know, where, where that's supposed to be used, colon, dashes, et cetera, et cetera. So develop speed. So speak you wanna understand uh, you know how to make speed your friend, right? Because it is a time test. So you want to not only know what you're doing, but you want to be quick at it as well. So uh, this is a speed reading practice. So, you know, make sure you do speed reading practice, right? Uh, and make sure you do timed math drills, right? So, you know, you can even start off solving a math problem and, and you know, you're just learning how to make sure you know how to do the, the solve the problems, right? Then you can move to timing yourself, have a timer, have a stopwatch, set it to a one minute and start solving problems in one minute or less. Then once that, and once you get used to that, you can set it to 50 seconds and uh, you go to 40 seconds and you go to 30 seconds, right? Uh, and then you, of course you wanna do practice tests. So the practice test should be, uh, should mock the real life situation, right? So if you're taking a section which is 30 minutes, you know, time at 30 minutes. If you're supposed to have a 10 minute break, time the 10 minute break, right? To try to create a real life environment as much as possible. And then you, you wanna focus on weaknesses. So, you know, after that practice test, you wanna relearn any material or topic. And, you know, for anyone interested, just reach out to me. I have, you know, the list of, of, of topics on the math and writing, the, the math, reading and uh, grammar section, sections. And then, you know, some, some study strategies, right? You really want to model, you know, you're studying based off what's on the actual SAT, right? So, you know, you're studying not just to study or you're not just learning, improving your general knowledge in, in general, right? Like you're specifically preparing for the SAT. You know, again, this is a time test. It's testing your uh, comprehension, right? In the math portion and the writing writing portion, reading portion, grammar, all that's testing your comprehension. It's testing your stamina. It's testing your speed, right? So you want to uh, increase your horsepower, right? You want to have uh, checks and balances for yourself. So, you know, for one example is a 30 second rule. If you can't solve a problem in 30 seconds, mark it to come back and move to the next one, right? You want to keep yourself hydrated, um, you know, using something such as power rate or vitamin water to combat Decision fatigue, right? You want to get at least seven, eight hours of sleep. Um, you know, you, you want to uh, have oatmeal and protein for breakfast, right? So uh, oatmeal, you can, you know, if oatmeal tastes really good. You can put in some blueberries, some other fruit if you want, uh, you know, put in some some different kinds of uh, nuts, almonds, peanuts. You, you put on, you know, have some, some milk, some sugar, some honey or whichever one you want to use uh if you want um you know and then protein you know you want to have some eggs some salmon some you know some turkey bacon beef bacon um some some kind of protein right um some you know because that's going to give you energy the oatmeal will give you like sustained energy the protein also will give you sustained energy right as opposed to sugar if you eat you know if you're drinking like a coffee or you're eating like you know a cinnamon roll i mean that's just sugar you, you're going to be excited for an hour and then, I mean, you crash after that. So, I mean, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make in terms of energy is not sleeping enough, you know, trying to stay up the night before and, and learn more stuff. No, you, you need rest. And then two, you know, messing up their breakfast, right? Breakfast, you need to have, you know, something like oatmeal, some like some like oats, uh, even like, you know, what's it called? Granola, you know, that, 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 that should be a suitable replacement for oatmeal. But you need something like that that's going to give you that, that energy, right? And then the protein, that's really going to also help with uh, energy and alertness and, you know, have a, have some fat as well, right? Um, you know, like have, you know, like if you're going to have the salmon or bacon or eggs, you know, they all have like some level of fat, some healthy fat, 
right? Uh, especially the salmon, right? Uh, you know, you want healthy fat. It's going to all.